Crocodiles. They have to be one of the most incredible predators on our planet today. Few places are better to see these animals in action than the Mara River. And in this video, I'm going to show you one of my favorite photographs taken of a crocodile in action. Although it is an older photograph, it's one that will always stand out and no doubt get your attention. Hi, my name is Marlon Detoy. I am a professional wildlife photographer and safari guide. And a question I get asked pretty often is, which is your favorite photograph? And um, it's a tough one to answer. And I thought, um, I'm gonna just do a bunch of videos explaining some of my photo favorite photographs, not only why they're my favorite, but also the process uh, in terms of the editing and uh, you know how I captured them, the story behind it, and just making it a bit more interesting for you. I think it'll be fun. So without further ado, let's get into the first one, which uh, I just decided, you know, <laughs> let's just go big and start with like one of the most outrageous pictures I've ever taken, quite literally um, really out there. And it's a uh, crocodile that literally swallowed the head and neck of an adult zebra. Uh, as uh, crazy as that sounds, it's true. It really did that. Um, but the great thing about the story is not the fact that this is the wildest sighting or you know <laughs> one of the craziest pictures. I remember when I first shared it, it, it kind of went viral. You know, people really loved it. And uh, just because it's quite grotesque and uh, you know just really isn't. Um, this uh, um, gracious, uh, beautiful animal picture. It's just really vivid and detailed and, yeah, quite grotesque. <laughs> but it uh, captures your imagination, captures your attention pretty much immediately. And I wanted to share this because uh, it's just a cool story behind because I think often as photographers, we overthink the shot and, you know, your technique's got to be perfect and this has got to be in place and you got to, you know, you have to have this just set of things in place to get the photograph when, in fact, sometimes you just have to be in the right place at the right time. And this was exactly that case. You know, we were driving in the Mara, uh, we were looking for a potential crossing. There was a herd on the other side, they were moving back and forth and, you know, doing their thing as they do, walking to the water, walking back. And then they decided to change direction and kind of walk along the bank for a bit. And I remember I was just driving and all of a sudden, um, out of the corner of my eye, I saw this croc on the bank of the river with this zebra head, literally this zebra head in its mouth. And um, we obviously stopped because it was quite a sight. But at the time, it was kind of, he was lying in the water, there's a few crocs around, some of the zebra was submerged, and it wasn't you know, um, super photogenic just yet, but it looked very interesting. So we stopped. And um, that's when the crocodile started not only like chewing at the head, but trying to position the head so that it could swallow it. Now, crocs can't chew like we would or like a normal predator would, where they chomp, chomp, chomp and bites off pieces of flesh and swallow that. They just have to either grip hold of something and like rip it until it literally breaks off or they have to swallow it whole. You've heard of the term death roll, which is when these crocs just grab hold of stuff and just roll, 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 and rip off a chunk. And it could be literally a leg or grabbing hold of the side, but they basically just grab it, spin around voraciously and, uh, or ferociously, sorry, and eventually rip off a chunk of meat. And this croc didn't do that because the head, the size of the meat was, or the head and the neck was a little bit, you know, it was an odd size. It was very big, but you know, you couldn't really spin it because there was no, nothing to hold onto the um, what was rema remaining of the zebra. And so it just eventually swallowed this croc, um, this uh, zebra head whole. And I mean, if I look at these pictures, it's just, uh, it's incredible to see what this crocodile was able to do. It, um, I mean, it literally just swallowed that head. It repositioned it eventually so that the neck and the, all, you know, half of the neck could fall into the, the mouth and then the head went up. And photographically, I mean, it really is uh, of pictures that I like it. <laughs> it's very vivid, but it, it was a case of right place, right time. And now, yes, we had the gear, we had longer lenses, but, you know, there's a point where gear, it matters. I, I, I believe that, but there's also a point where it's content trumps the, 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 the gear that you have, you know, a great story, a vivid sight an, an amazing scene. If you get that, people will fall in love with that more than, oh, they're not going to ask, yes, what camera did you shoot that on? They want to know the story. They want to know what happened. It's not about, um, you know, what was your F-stop and did you underexpose or overexpose? It's just like, 
wow, man, that is wild. Like, and that's what you want to go for sometimes. And you can always, can't always plan for it. And, um, I mean, if you look at a shot like this, this is, uh, this is uh, incredible to think of not only the fact that it was swallowing the head, but the size of this crocodile. I mean, there's these little things at the bottom of its neck. I've never even seen this before. I still don't know really what it is exactly. Um, but just an incredible sight to see and um, eventually swallowed the whole animal. Um, and there was just the thing went down one go. And especially this side, you can see how much power is in those jaws. Here he chomped down on that zebra and literally crushed the skull before swallowing it and it didn't matter what I was shooting on it was just the right place the right time and it it you know created this incredible photograph and something I still look back to today and think like wow man I was lucky and I remember I had a couple of amazing guests with me Subi um, also getting some great shots of this scene and um, yeah just uh, super super happy in the end to have seen it to have uh, photographed it and um, yeah, just a, an incredible photograph that I wanted to share a bit of the backstory behind and hopefully it makes sense. Hopefully uh, you learn something. Um, you know, it's not always about the gear, although it helps. Sometimes the right place, the right time, and uh, you can make photographic magic. Hope you enjoyed that with me and check in for some more soon. Bye.